Um, the sum, he, I thought this was interesting how he got the data. There's a tracking firm using AI that was able to just scan public filings to see who's actually gotten these loans, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a huge service to the American people because never before is there a single place where you can go and it's, there's complete transparency. It shows the actual underlying filings. Uh, and so basically they created a, an AI bot to trawl the securities filings filed to the SEC and to look for the words PPP. And it basically came together with the total. And as you see, it's about 870 million from 222 companies. Right. Now, so I guess my question now is there some, as we found out about who got the money, you know, it's, I remember when Shake Shack first came on CNBC and he said, yes, we're applying. We want to do everything we can to raise capital. Then they saw the outrage about Ruth's Chris and, and realized we better return this. We have other uh, methods of, of raising it. Yeah. I, I get my guess is there's a lot of companies in these filings whose names have not yet been publicly disclosed. And the question is going to be, what do they do about that information being made public? Yeah. So I think what we have to do is separate the, the people in, who actually have true need. And, you know, there are a ton of microcaps here who claim that they don't really have access to the capital markets at this point in time, who claim that this is really essential for them to hold on to their their employees. And then there are companies, if you look at the filings, you can actually see that there are companies that actually have tons of cash on hand or significant amounts of cash on hand. And believe me, you, journalists like myself and others, and I want the whole world to be able to have access to this information, we should be pouring through those filings to see exactly who and who should not have received it. Because as you can imagine, this is sort of a chaotic rollout. We're in round two. And I think it's an iter iterative process where the first round was basically, you know, they didn't want to slow it down. So they basically had uh, requirements that are quite vague. In this second round, you know, Treasury was very, very clear. They said last Thursday, if you're a public company with wherewithal, significant market cap, you should not be tapping this. Right. And by the way, you have two weeks to give it back. No harm, no foul. Right. We'll see what happens when that. As but you know, they, they've issued that guidance after the fact. When this thing was first up and running, the idea was. If your company needs its liquidity to get through coronavirus, then you can take the money. And if you don't keep your payroll or what have you, then you have to pay it back as a loan. And if you do, it's a grant. Now, nobody got out there and said, oh, but make sure if you're a publicly traded company, you don't take it. I mean, a lot of this guidance has come out in hindsight. And frankly, only after Congress ran out of money, Hugh, if it, this was an unlimited program, there would have been the availability of a little bit for everybody to get some. Ultimately, you would hope. You're absolutely right, Kelly. And a couple of things. Well, first of all, if there were finite money, infinite money wouldn't matter. However, we do know that there's 350 plus 310 billion, and it went in a matter of days, right? So if there's finite money, we need to basically prioritize the people who would die without this money. And so, and these are the really small companies without access to the capital markets, without access to investment bankers who can't take out debt or new equity like Shake Shack did. And, you know, as a result, I think that basically it's OK. It's not a sin if you took this money. OK, it's a sin if you took this money and then after Thursday are keeping it. And I think that's the real message to the CEOs and the treasurers and the, and the CFOs of American companies who have to basically think, you know, look at their look at their uh, their balance sheets and see. Right. And we keep and we not. Is but, the pressure going to be worth it? Yeah. You know, ultimately, I don't think that there's going to be a lot of teeth behind the Treasury saying, you know, you know, give that give the money back within two weeks. I think this is ultimately sort of a public sort of process in which, you know, companies should be shamed if they took this money and if they have access to other capital, because effectively you're squeezing the mom and pop businesses who have no other access. Yeah. So a couple of things. I mean, again, I think that Let's go piece by piece here. We found out this morning uh, that the Los Angeles Lakers were among those who apparently uh, got money under this program. And this, I thought, was interesting in their statement. They said, once we found out the funds from the program had been depleted, we, we repaid the loan so financial support would be directed to those most in need. And that's the same thing that Shake Shack and others have said. They didn't know when they first took out the money that the funds would be depleted. They might be taking it from someone else. And we think about some of the worst offenders here, you know, that our viewers have been upset about Junior's Cheesecake and companies that aren't public at all would have no disclosure that would ever let the public know if they got this money, you know, that... It, the the imperative that we're putting on these companies includes a lot of those who we'd never know if they took the money or not. Again, even with the Lakers, we didn't know until they put out a statement this morning yeah. morning saying they'd returned it. Yeah, and so the, the website we're talking about, Fact Squared, only trawls public uh, filing, so so we would not know about the Lakers. So Lakers are the number two most valuable franchise in the NBA. They're worth something like four point four billion, according to Forbes. They have the wherewithal. They actually have a credit facility within the NBA that they could tap. So look. Again, this is ultimately free government money. 
And in the first round, if you took it, that's not sort of like, it's not to be expected. You, you would be, you, you might've been a little stupid if you hadn't taken it. But now that we know that the money is finite and actually it, there's no guarantee that there's gonna go beyond a round two, I think it is imperative about all these companies. We're talking about, you know, the LA Lakers, you know, we're talking about AutoNation. Now AutoNation is another one. They tapped it for 77 million. They have a market cap of over 3 billion. They gave back the money, you know, they applied for the money and then they took it back without even filing anything. So, I mean, I think the pressure is gonna be high for a lot of these companies. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think reporters and, and the public are gonna keep the pressure up, Kelly. I know, and it's ironic because then when the Fed starts its Main Street lending program, a lot of these same companies might arguably qualify and then go get the money that way uh, in any case. Hugh, we appreciate it. Thanks for joining me.